Dudes, how's it going? Happy Thursday. I'm here in my little closet. Uh, this is the rare time uh, that I just get to do these solo streams, which are really fun. It's a nice, it's a great balance. I really, really love the streams of Spoonie and Daniel, and they're so much fun, but it's nice to kind of just do something like this. And uh, I'm in control. All the glitches that you see, that's my fault. I don't know why it's glitching, but uh, very max. There's a max headroomness to my OBS quality. But anyways, thanks for joining. It's totally short notice. I wasn't planning on doing this, um, but I had, I don't know. I just was feeling kind of a little angsty today, and I, I had a little extra free time, and I thought, you know, this would be a great time to just do a solo stream. So thanks for joining me. I'm going to read some of the chats. Cable Abel, or Cabell Abel. <coughs> Oh, hell yes, one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah, I want to, I'm very excited about playing this game. The Beginner's Guide by Davy Reedon, who did the Stanley Parable. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> yeah, a lot of people talking about how much this game means to them. And Amy, A-M-I-E 93, uh, wrote, Paul, can you please play Disco Elysium? It's not very difficult in terms of gameplay, point and click, and would be an absolute joy to watch you play. I think you sent me an email yesterday, and I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to get back to you, but um, your recommendation of this game really made me want to take a look at it, and uh, you're certainly pitching it uh, perfectly. Uh, I really, really want to. How am I? Wait a minute. How do I? I just saw that we somebody gave us... How did I end up getting my goal already I didn't see anything coming through anyway I want to look it up but somebody somebody donated already thank you so much what how come it's not on my my notes anyways thank you whoever that was unless it's a unless it's a glitch um, yeah, we have to give this person praise. I, I don't know. Uh, please, please mention if you just donated, please uh, reveal yourself because normally a, a widget pops up and would uh, would do that for you. I'll look it up on uh, on coffee in just a sec. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyway, excited about this game. Oh, and then uh, the, your game, uh, Disco Elysium. I, I'm totally interested, and I told Daniel about it, and somebody uh, gifted it to him a while back, so it's definitely going w way up on the uh, uh, on the list, so thank you for that. Um, Schwex is here, Adam. Fun guy, uh, fun guy plays. Hey, man, how are you? Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Um, I also noticed you said been in a funk lately and uh, then Schwex was kind enough to you know let you know that we're all here for you and it's true you know I'm I think I've been in a bit of a funk lately myself just um, a lot of it's been so busy the last few months I just had so many things going on and it just was feeling I liked it it was great being busy and seeing things that I had put together starting to uh, take shape and now it's slowed down to something that's more normal. But I'm finding myself with more time on my hands than I'm used to. And, and I haven't quite figured out how to deal with that. So, again, another nice reason to, to do a solo stream with you guys. Uh, all right, so here's what I know about the Beginner's Guide. Probably more than I should. But uh, ever since I played the Stanley Parable... Um, let me just see if anybody else. Okay. Oh, well, Mia's, is it Mia's? Uh, let's see, did I get so? He just wrote, been a fan of Fan, ta fan 2 since 23. Just about to turn 39 in less than two hours. Dude, you're gonna be 40. Welcome, it's a good, it's a good decade. You'll love it. It would really make my day for Mr. Stetler to acknowledge my message, but in any case, good to see you back on. Thank you, and it's good to see you. And I'm not sure if this is the message or if you are the one who donated, but um, but thank you. 
Uh, now I have to know. I'm going to go on to uh, coffee.com really quick and see what it is. I can do that. But anyways, um, there it is. Uh, let's see. Is this right? Today's what? Today's the, is today's the 11th? What day is today? Yeah, it's the 11th. All right, so nothing's popped in. Um, we got our goal yesterday, so maybe nobody did. Oh, boy, whatever. I'll leave it alone. I'm not sure if anybody <laughs> donated. I think I just didn't. Uh, um, I'll, deal, I'll deal with it later. Anyway, I don't think I got to my 200% goal. I think that was um, that was uh, from yesterday because we, we did get to our goal yesterday. Um, anyway, the game, the beginner's guide. So I loved Stanley Parable. Just couldn't believe it. it was just I just loved who, the writing of it. I loved how irreverent it was, um, how deep it was in so many levels. And the humor and that mess that 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 uh, narrator was just amazing. So then I heard about this game that this was the next game uh, the main guy came out with. And then I wanted to play it. And people said it's a lot different, and uh, which is great. I, I'm totally up for that. So before I played the game, I thought, well, why don't I watch just a couple minutes of a playthrough? So I turned a playthrough on a couple days ago, maybe, yeah, earlier this week. And watch about five minutes, just the very, very beginning. But immediately I'm like, ooh, this is interesting. And, and he said a few things that made me wonder if the narrator, which is him, is a reliable narrator. So I immediately kind of went down a rabbit hole going, well, is this true? Or is it what he says? Is this person real? And then I got a little bit into Davy Reedon's life, I guess, and some of his struggles and all these Reddit discussions about him and and everything. All to say... Uh, I feel like I know more than I, I want to know, but it's also just people speculating on what this game means. So it sounds like, so the game comes across as a very personal experience to this game developer, and he's going to share this with us. And that's all I know. So I want to, let's do it. Let's, let's do this thing. Before I do, I'll very quickly say, Okay, shot and Jaeger. Yeah, it was showing 200% from the start. Anyways, thank you guys. This is our uh, coffee and uh, Patreon members, the folks that have been making uh, uh, days like today available and, 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 and doable and really appreciate that. So uh, I think we just had a new, uh, someone else just up, up their membership from 3 to $10 a month. So that was kind and we'll make sure we get your name on there uh, soon. But if you can join, we'd love to have you join. If you want to add to my 200% of my goal, which is really 0% of my goal so far, uh, you certainly can do that by just doing a one-time donation. Uh, and I'll tally. I'll, I'll keep a tally of, of what the real real percentage is uh, through coffee.com. All right, let's do this thing. Okay. Right off the bat, I, um, I have two things. Can you guys hear the music? Should be able to hear like some seagulls and stuff. Looks like it's all working. Um, all right, let's just start this thing. Here's what I know. If anybody knows how, it looks like I can only use the keyboard, W A S D, and uh, the mouse, which I'm not a big fan of. I'm not very good at. I have my Xbox controller set up, but the options. If you see the options, they don't give you. Oh no, that's not that. Let me go back to controller. Uh, keyboard mouse. It doesn't give you the option to. And then when I plug in the Xbox, it doesn't automatically work. So, anyways, unless someone tells you differently, I'm just going to play with the keyboard. Right, let's begin this thing. You guys ready? Uh, let me just double check on. Oh my gosh, KR is turning 34 in less than two hours. You guys were born the same time of day, on the same day, six years apart. 
Uh, yeah, you're welcome, guys. All right, here we go. Fun guy plays. Just tipped five dollars. Really? How come none of these widgets are showing up? Oh, I think I know. I think I know. Daniel had me turn it off because. There we go. There we go. Thank you, Fun Guy Plays. And then where's the goal? There's the goal. <laughs> now it's looking more like a, a thing. Daniel would laugh at me. Since I'm, I'm not, because he's not running it. Um, so many mistakes already. All right, let's just, now we're actually at 10% of our goal. So we'll pretend it's 210%, but it's really 10%. Thanks, Fun Guy Plays. Um, widgets are on. I hope the sound's on. All right, I'm going to play this game. Okay, screen size is good. Audio's on, I think. Okay, so they want us to use these controllers. Hi there. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. I wish I could talk. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. Mm. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think I he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made, until suddenly one day he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken himself, this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if himself? the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Really? Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Um, okay, that's a lot to unpack. Um, here's what he's saying. He's saying that he is Davy Reedon. He made Stanley Parable. He was going through some personal stuff. 
and he has a friend who goes by the name of Coda, who is a programmer who makes all these really interesting games just for himself with no actual intention of releasing it. He just puts it, makes it, throws it away. Now Davey <clears throat> somehow has access to this, uh, his all his files, and we're going to play these games or explore these games in the hopes of getting to know who Coda really is, right? My issue is, A, I don't think Coda is real. I think he's an unreliable narrator. I already don't believe that you would get access to somebody's files without sharing this with them or what is it posthumous or what is it? So now my question then, if that's true, is who is Coda? Is Davy Reedon, uh, is he talking about himself? Is he Coda? Is he, who is, what is this story really about? So we have to listen to it on its own terms, but we should be thinking about what else it could mean while we go. You can just tell this is made by um, the Stanley Parable guy. This just has such a Stanley Parable look and feel to it, so you know it's him. Oh, shit. Warning. This is a machine I'm scared the hell out of Shift destruction. Oh, God, oh, no, I'm going to shoot someone. This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Can I get... How do I... What are my... W-A-S-T... Huh. Huh, I don't know how to get out of here. Is there any way to open doors or anything? So I can't go in here. Oh, this is fun. What am I doing? This is so Stanley Parable. Okay, Davy Davy Reed and your your coda. Warning, whisper machine status active and active. This is like a, a game developer doodling in his, his notebook. That's what it feels like. It's like, yeah, I got some ideas. This is kind of neat. There's no real. Jump. And now we're going to so we're check Hold on. Options. Keyboard mouse. Uh, so move forward, move back. A D. Control is duck. What about shoot? Strafe. Move left, strafe, move right. S A D. Um, all right, looks like I thought I, I thought I shot the door. All right, let's keep going. Oh, there we go. If I hit E, I can't hear. Can you hear the shooting? Oh, look at that, my the bolt. Cool. Oh, look at that, that's kind of cool. Come back here. Let's see if this looks really yeah. What? No, I'm lost already. No map. It's so weird to have a gun. Security call breached. Hostile alien life inbound. What? It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. 
For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately, we don't no really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy force neutralized. Begin shoot evacuation. He sounds like, um, there's this uh, YouTuber who I really like. Who's my nerd writer. And he does all these video essays on, uh, um, you know, on movies or art or architecture. He's just a very smart dude and he does these kind of cool in-depth interviews or exposés on this stuff. And it seems like this game is trying to... I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. It's the bottom of the universe. Apparently, this space station has a labyrinth on it. Oh, God. I, uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to skip you on past it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. That beam is powering a whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? No, I don't want to. I say, no, let me out of here. <laughs> oh, drats. Okay, I'm going to have to go sacrifice my... Body. This is cool. Isn't this cool? This is not a branching point, unfortunately. The only option is to step into the beam. This is very Stanley Parable because instead of Davy just sort of uh, talking about this, it, you know, in the other game, it was the, uh, the narrator telling you not to do certain things, or there's a, there's a similarity. It's really cool. All right, let's go on in. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. So what happened with that? So we go back in. There we go. Oh, wow. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. But what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. Do we all agree that this is not Coda, but this is Davy Reedon, right? Thank you, the hundred. All right. I think so try walking backwards. Yep, 
In this game, you can only walk backwards. Oh my gosh. The past was behind her. Oh my goodness. All right. I can only walk backwards. I can't even go sideways. Oh my goodness. This is kind of fun. Just stay. So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment <laughs> combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. Love the music. Love the music. I like the music in the, the past was behind. Is that where we this is where we started, right? Now what? I want to be done. Get me out of here. It's a short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Hey, Which to me is why it works, because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. It's like short stories, right? They're like little, little mini haiku games instead of like a full game. It's just these things that make you think, things that don't necessarily need to be huge. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Okay, I'm, I'm, I buy you, I buy it, I'm willing. Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. Sorry about my glitching, you guys, it's pretty. pretty I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. You did. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. He's Once you. he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? Or maybe Coda is part you and part who you were and who you are. I need to know, but let's just pretend it's Coda. That's who he wants us to pretend. Can I go up? I mean, it's funny, you see a ladder. I love that. I love the artwork to this. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. You 
walk around talking people down from pursuing their hopes and dreams. A normal game where you have to scream to a mic every 15 seconds to keep playing. A key in one game. A room that's warm and nice and filled with little ideas for games. He plays a loud bodiless soul, walking around, confusing people. Start Coda small. would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. Mm -hmm. It can be a very slow climb to get there. The game is nothing but giant blocks of text explaining what's happening. A normal game where you have to scream into a mic and walk around talking people down. Oh, there are so many more. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. Hey, I solved it. Maybe I did. Maybe I did. No, no. So it's just darkness on this end. It's darkness on this end. Hmm. Can't do anything now. All right, let me just walk you through it. Yeah, you. You're gonna hit the switch on the outside to open the door, then hit the same switch and walk through the door before it closes. You'll see a second switch on the inside, which will open the second door. Forget that solution because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. <laughs> we're gonna see it a lot. Oh boy, really? Okay. So it was open and shut it. Turn around and open it. Any chance you could drop the game volume down? Yeah, okay, super loud, can't hear you very good. Yeah. So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve the puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. All right, 
Now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. What? Oh, well, there we go. How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same, is that most of the time you don't get to know what you're missing or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand then what is it? Hey, really? That's a... That is a um, theme in his games, is the rules of gaming and exiting now. Aha! Uh -huh. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's I'm a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role Looks in, like it's some game. larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Okay, I'll turn myself up a little bit, hold on. Okay, so that should be a little bit better. There I am. And then the game can go back down a little bit. Okay, I think that should get us. How's that? Ooh. This is cool. I love it really is these stark backgrounds that he creates are really stunning. They're very it's like um oh what's that painter? Uh Hopper. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms. Yeah. It's just because he's working with what the engine does well. Okay. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. And so much, just the kind of, I don't know, something about this type of game just really fascinates me. I'm loving the sound, I'm loving that it feels dangerous, but it's also more profound than just monsters. I 
some of this is very Doom-like, just without the monsters and the guns. That'd be interesting to be able to walk through the Doom, all the Doom rooms, with some moody music like this. No monsters, no guns. Just the aftermath of what... Keep going for oh I can't get out. Look at that. <laughs> oh my gosh. It gives you the idea if you think you know where you what your options are, but you have no options. Whichever way I go, it's gonna get me where they want me to go. I'm going this way. Oh, I can't go that way. Oh, I'm going this way. This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're going to skip that. I think that's the other thing Stanley Parable does too, is that they will test the limits of gamers and say, all right, I have a four hour. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. See, there are people that will just, <laughs> just do what I'm doing right now just to see what there might be. There's got to be something interesting in here. But instead, I'm just walking. that he makes us do the thing that he's saying that could have made him do. Did I miss something? I feel like I missed something, but can you miss anything? It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. Ah, too slow. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over but I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Yeah, the camera glitch on my uh, OBS is definitely spooky. It's very, uh, kind of works for these, these moody games. There's a great mod for the original Quake game where it moves all the monsters and changes the soundtrack. That sounds cool. Alright, listen, listen, listen. Oh, listen. Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. You there, did you come up from up above? What was up there? Yes, there was a world stamped with whiteness. Yes, there was an enormous prison I spent hours in. 
yes, there are these floating colored blocks. Let's do the first one. That's the world above. We've been there. Now this is important. Did you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? Yes, I did. That was literally the last thing I did before coming here. No, I don't remember having to go through any puzzle. I prefer not to tell you. After all, we've only just met. I'm going to be enthusiastically open and trusting. You guys, uh, is the sound better now? Again, perfect. Now please tell us how you solved it. Tell us the solution. Tell us how you got to the other side. I don't remember how I solved it. I'm trying to remember, but I can't. I didn't solve it. Someone else let me in. Trust me, you don't want to go over there. Hmm. These are all kind of lies. The closest to the truth is number two. Uh-oh. We didn't solve it. So you have learned nothing. You cannot help us escape this prison. You are not the one I need. Surely there will be someone else. I didn't have it. Do I get to do it over? Oh, come on. Did I have a chance? Could I have actually said the right thing? I don't think so. Whoa, I lost my... Ah, uh, I can't go back. The walls keep closing in on me. Oh, bummer. Oh, there they are. Hello, how did you get here? Was there a puzzle in the past time? Yes. Do you want to know how to solve it? No, I've been right here this entire time. Let's try one. No, no, we actually find the block space between the doors to be far more interesting. Have you seen it yet? The block space between the doors. Why would I care about the space between the doors? Actually, now that you mention it, I remember feeling strange as I passed through it. I don't recall a space between the doors. Oh, man. before you understand, which is fine. You'll see it again soon. The space between the doors. Okay, let's just look at the space between the doors. Is that the doors? Is that my only way out? Yeah, okay, it's my only way out. Let's do it again. Yeah. And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. One last descent. Can I go back up? I guess I could. All right. a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. Hmm. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because yeah. now he wants something to hold on to. He wants yeah. a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. Good point. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. I don't believe it. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. I think it's going to get more opaque and more confusing. The opposite of clear. And I'm okay with that. Uh, 
Oh, I'm going to take a second. All notes you see are left. Uh -oh. I want to check out that. Uh, Zuki says it's my little girl's seventh birthday today, so it's been flat out celebrating with her. Nice to end my evening with a glass of wine and a good company in a game. Absolutely. Happy birthday to your seven-year-old. Oh, man. My kids are about to turn 14 and 12. Oof. No, 15 and 12. 15 and 12. Jeez. Music is overpowering my voice a bit. I'd say you're a six and it's an eight, nine. Still. Okay. All right. Good to know. Should have done this in advance. Sorry about that, guys. Oh no, did I just, I think I'm gonna bring this down. Okay. It should be better. Uh, then Solipsis, Suki, I have a five-year-old, says then Solipsis, and he's my frame of reference for everything. You can only imagine how fun a seventh birthday is. It is fun. All right, so, sorry about the sound issues, guys. Tell me if it's better. room. Not. Okay. So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Either way, to me they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. But it's ironic, isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. So how many of you- I could just you... get to know you through your work. Would need I think to this is why I always liked Coda's game so much, is because it felt like they let me through. have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. But ass but. <laughs> A free t shirt. On the other side, door. Makes game includes door. Cannot open door. Thanks. Open sesame. Can't get out the door. They're not doing anything for me. Do you hear the chimes? They keep you going, don't they? I would like very much to be desired. No, I 
can't go. Am I gonna fall? You won't let me fall. So I have to go through here. I don't know, if I weren't doing this with you guys right now, I think I might even... I think I would probably read more of these notes. There's a part of me thinking I should just keep moving forward because i got to keep moving forward. People are watching. I'm not safe. But I do think that the game is telling us that these notes aren't leading to a story. I mean, they're all little truths, but it's not going to get us to something. Well done, all yeah. Yeah. Also in this game, you just know that Davey's going to be here in a minute, kind of talking us through what we've just been through. Oh, wait, we can't go any further? What did I just do? At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. This doesn't make sense. The second door won't open. Okay, let's see. I don't know, you guys. This is, uh... And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, oh. before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture I like that I like that I always we do um, having a moment between um, you just experience something and then to immediately dive into the next thing without reflecting at all um, so what do we what do we reflect on here all these crazy voices behind me. <laughs> butt ass butt was the best one. Um, no, that's a good point, Suki. I'll, I'll just stream my own pace. I'm trying to do that. Um, yeah, are they uh, same as the book, same as all art, Mr. Narrator? Yeah. But I, I like that. I don't know what this game is making me feel. I enjoy the mood quite a bit. I like that the conceit is somebody trying to get to know somebody else through their art. I also know that this is a made up, or I'm convinced it's not a real story. This is like a, a fable more than anything. And that's interesting to me. Let's go. How do you leave notes is the last note. We just left the notes behind. I'm not gonna miss the notes. I'm not in love with the notes. Love typewriters.
That was cool. That was cool. Porn stars die too. Okay, what? this one is tough. It's gonna kind of just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. All right, we can do that. Yeah, these are like hopper paintings. Those clean lines, light, shadow. Oh, there's no place to go. Can go through here? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna go out in the backyard. This is like the, uh, the garage in Stanley Parable where you just, you're going in circles and you don't realize you're going in circles. See, like, this is it. I'm in the, the whole game. And there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it. You just walk to the end of a hallway. Except, for some reason, Coda gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's gonna start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, cool. Here's version two. So there's that. What furniture ought to go in the center of the room? How about a TV with surround sound? A refrigerator? Put a giant hole in the ground. <coughs> I'm a little hungry. Let's put a refrigerator in there. Okay, now what about the, along the wall? Let's put a huge picture of a horse. Washing machine. Ten stoves lined up along the wall. Picture of horse. I don't see the horse. I didn't ask for couches. Should light up this room a bit. A skylight, a full ceiling window. Let's open this baby up. I'm thinking 10 by 10. We'll put live Tesla coils in each corner. Let's do a skylight. Is it gonna happen? No, it's just dealing with what it was there before. Who are you? Where exactly are you doing this from? None of my choices are making any difference, exactly. Uh, there's a bit more to this one, but still it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness' sake. So okay, he throws it out and starts over. This time he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. Sound okay, guys? Hello, please walk. I don't believe Coda is real. Follow the instructions carefully. Take care that you remember each step. First click on this table. Good. Go over to the photo frame and click to turn it slightly. Now turn the floor lamp in this room off, then turn it back on. Oh, this is fun. I don't know why this is fun, but it is. On and on. Now go to the left side sofa, move it over a little. Which is left? Is that left or is that left? Finally, touch the shelves. That's it. In a real prison, the escape will now open. Return to the start and be taken back to your prison. Okay, what's going on here? Did I remember everything? And of course, now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. Yeah. That sucks. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside and the outside is the inside. Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen of them. Personally, I think it's awful to work. Hold on, guys. 
I'm going to turn this down even a little bit more. <laughs> Zen Solve says, Curtis can move couches. Buddha doesn't have that voice telling you to stop, that particular mechanism of defense against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going. And then he hits on something. And he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. Okay. I can't tell how much this narrator, Davey, sounds like the nerd writer guy. Does anybody know who nerd, nerd writer is? I forgot his real name, but uh, he's got a really cool YouTube channel. And they sound almost exactly alike. Oh, we're going to the end of the game because here is the light. And it's true, you're walking towards the light at the end. You're always walking towards the light, light post. We gotta go to the, yeah, yeah, of course. I love that open up, oh, remember these? Can I get in? Hello? Who is this? Hey, it's me. I'm you from after you escaped the prison. Is that my only option? All right. You're me. Dot, dot, dot. So you were trapped in this prison too? Yep, I was in the furniture maze. Yep, I was in the escape tutorial. And so this is what Koda wants, is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. You know, all of these games so far are Coda talking to himself. Actually, I'm forgetting what being in the prison was like. That's good. It's strange, but in a way, I kind of miss being in the prison. It feels like being completely still and wildly in motion at the same time. Three truths. Do I miss being in the prison? I was kind of excited to try that puzzle again. Why? Was there anything about it that you felt good about? Being here sucks. True. Once, maybe I only like things once I don't have them anymore. I was comfortable. I knew its limits. I knew my place. Don't you feel excited about getting out? The promise of freedom? Well, I guess we ask a question, right? It's the only thing that matters to me. It's the only thing keeping me going. Excited doesn't really do it justice. Exactly, you have something you care about, something you look forward to. You won't always have something that you care about as much as this. Just be with that enthusiasm for a bit. Let it ooze into your flesh. Uh, I don't know. Wait, for me. And did you get a call from another version of you when you were trapped? Now I think I'm the first person to call back. Yes, I did get a call. That's how I escaped. No, I don't know. Did we get a call? Then can you tell me how to get out? Maybe I can come find you. What do I have to do? To get out, all you have to do is be sincere. To get out, you need to tell me how you feel right now. To get out, just talk with me for a bit. Ugh. These are all terrible. What? That will free me? How does that work? Oh, come on, you're killing me. Game. You're doing this thing that you do. Listen, you can't know until you're out, but I promise it works. Just tell me how you feel. It'll make sense. This is like a Monkey Island dialogue wheel. I feel afraid that nothing will ever change. Let's go on, go on. I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. Yeah. After all of the obsession and frustration, 
just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, it would be nice. So what would it look like if Coda wanted to make a game about talking to someone other than himself? To me, this environment is meant to represent Coda's puzzle, with the two doors on either side and a dark transitional space between. I'm glad as heck that you showed up. And I'm having to clean this entire house all by myself and right miserable. That would have been. Everyone knows. Lonesome You'll notice that the quality of the art is a step up from previous games, including this new and improved chat system, which he started using from this point on. From here on out, he begins putting much more effort into the visual polish of his work, and this particular game took two months to create as a result. Cleaning this whole place. That's the story, little one. Well, don't worry now, we'll be through this mess in no time. I promise. I wish there was more. Why don't I finish up here? In the meantime, could you please clear the table? Sure. Did it. Much nicer. That's the table I want to see. Now, would you please run into the bedroom and make the bed? Sure, I'll do that. This will be fun. While you're in there, why don't you straighten out the rug a bit? All the little details matter. Love it. Do you enjoy being a house cleaner? How did you end up doing this job? It's been a long time since I've seen a house this messy. Well, I don't enjoy it so much as I need it. When I'm working, I feel a kind of calm that rests in the pit of my ribcage. My soul can't be soothed any other way, I guess, it seems. Which I guess is all that matters. Oh, that and a tidy couch. Did you straighten the pillows on the sofa out there? Sure. <coughs> oh dear, looks like someone spilled a drink over by the couch. Maybe mop up. As long as you're over there. Oh, yeah, it looks like. I feel compelled to share an incredibly cheesy personal insight. You okay with that? Did I do everything I needed to do? Okay. Make it especially cheesy. Yeah. I'll try to get by. No, I mean no. No, it was stupid, sorry, never mind. Hey, three dishes need to be washed. Why don't you come do that? All right. Tell us your story. How about you scrub it down as best you can? Last I checked, the tub needed a cleaning. Okay, but you should tell me your story. I don't know why, but I find this so relaxing and great. Would you put them back on the shelf? Probably. Let's go. Where are the books?
Nice. Perfect. Now then, how about you come and clear these dishes off the After the intense set of prison games, this house cleaning level almost feels like cleansing. It does. It's the moment after a particularly difficult or traumatic experience where you just need to let it sit and digest inside of you and eventually cohere into something meaningful. It changes. Are all houses this easy to clean? Darling, let me tell you something. In your lifetime, you're going to clean a lot of houses. I tell my kids this all the time. And among all those, Few of them will stick out as truly wonderful, beautiful experiences. And none of them will be the ones that were. I know easy. that Coda really liked this game. Just something to think about. All this work, actually, this was the only one that he called me up to ask me to come over and look at it. This was during a period of a few months where he was like grossly happy all the time. Just walked around with a constant smile on his face. Hmm. Oh my gosh, just keep doing the same thing over again. Yeah, I was gonna say that it occurs to me that one's house is a lot like one's soul. You take care of it, and it takes care of you. Huh. Don't know why I felt so weird about saying that. I get it. That's a weird thing to say to someone you just met. Yeah, you're right. That's pretty cheesy. There's a bit of truth in it, no? Books. The books? We just did the books. I can't get out of here. I'm stuck. And then he creates something that was so kind of relaxing and fun. It turns into something that becomes... Like a, now it becomes a chore, right? I'm glad he made this. Me too. I'm glad he found some peace. This is not peaceful though. Because now it just never ends. It's life. When you clean up the pillows, someone's going to move the pillows. If you make a mess in the but, kitchen. Of course, it can't last. No. The music stops, your companion is gone, yeah. it's time to leave. The door at the top of the hill is now open as well. Again, you can't stay in the dark space for too long. You just can't. You have to keep moving. It's how you stay alive. Hey, uh, is anybody here? Um, anybody here play this game already? I don't know. I, I hear this is like an hour and a half or so to play. Um, I've got about half an hour more. So I'm worried that we'll get to the end, but I'm not going to be able to finish it today. So tell me if anybody has played this before. How much time do you think we've got left? There we go. There's the light. Which is the whole point of the puzzle doors, right? That sooner or later you have to pick up and move. I really thought that was the point of it. This one gets Maybe a bit more than a half hour. Okay. All right, I'm going to take I'm going to take 30 seconds. I don't have a Do I have a I guess I don't. So, just hang tight. I'll be back in 30 seconds. See you in a bit. Think about what we just went through and tell me your thoughts.
Okay, okay. No. <laughs> Switch the game to Neverhood. <laughs> oh no, you don't. You can't get you can't move. You can't go switching games on me. I'm in control. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Paul's leaving me alone with my thoughts. Time for the true horror to begin. Yes. All right. Let's see. Let's play. I'm enjoying this quite a bit. I feel like this is worthy of like a when did you come here today what is was it to improve your life was it to get a better job was it to make your relationships more meaningful no you came here to protect to become perfect this workshop to teach you how to be perfect i want your friends the people in your life to look at you and think wow this person is better human being than i am right now who do you, what do you think about that way in your own life who do you know is so well developed as a person compared to whom you feel useless, selfish, ungrateful? I intend to make you into that person. Perfection is within your grasp. And the question is not how we do it, but how we About do it About halfway through the game, the perspective shifts. Being perfect is effortless. Now you're the person talking. This is the key. How do you, you play achieve it? as the teacher? And suddenly you discover that your teacher is just as bigoted and afraid as you are. Tell oh, you and that. also you can move around the classroom now. Let me wait. This is easy. It is so easy. It is so easy. Being perfect is effortless. This is the key. How do I achieve it with no effort? Well, let me tell you right now. If it isn't effortless, then it's not the right answer. I can only I do two. I still love you. It's just that you make me feel so cold on the inside. <coughs> Thank goodness all of you perceive me as being wise and intelligent. Drinking is not hurting my life. If you are torturing yourself, trying to find the right solutions to your life, you're not doing it right. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm confused. Can I get out? Seek out only one thing. What is the easiest, simplest path for it? <laughs> yeah, it's not the assist. Ha ha ha, just kidding. Anyone want to do some ecstasy after this? There is no truth, there is no path. I don't want to go up there. I guess I have to go up there. Can't go up there. Huh, I can't go anywhere. Holy shit, you guys, something is coming out of the back of the room. Look out. I feel like it's one of the most relatable experiences that you can have. To assume that some other person is perfect and totally fulfilled in every way and completely miss all of the little flaws that make them painfully human. I, I think like, about this game a lot these days. I like that too, but the game part and the questions and answers got me distracted from the point I think you were trying to make. This one took a lot longer than all the others for Coda to make. It was four months between this and the last one. That's twice as long as it took him to make any other game before this, and it's not like it's particularly complex, so I remember I found that a little strange at the time. Stage. Oh. 
This is... All right, performance is beginning. Places, please. In this scene, you'll be playing as me. We are at a gathering of professionals. First, you start out leaning against this wall. Which wall? Oh, that wall. Uh -huh. All right, now what? That's the wall. The other side was the back. Good. Stay right there. All right. Stay right here. The woman across the room in this chair is a professional photographer of animals. It's your dream to photograph animals professionally. This is your one chance to learn something from her, to gain something, to succeed. Go on. Say something to her. Hello. Sorry, I have to leave. I always start with a hello. Hello, is that it? Yeah, it's a good start. It is. A, well, it's a conversation starter. You need to actually converse with her as a be a human being. Do it again. All right. I'm super, super scared right now. I like you. Here are all of my hopes and dreams. Oh, boy. Uh. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not what I said to her at all. You're completely missing the tone of the conversation. I was reserved, but I knew what I wanted. I was confident. For some reason, it was just that one moment, but I was confident. Maybe it's that you need a better feel of the setting. There were a lot of people around us. I'll give you some props to work with. These cones that bounce when you touch them will represent the people nearby. I'll talk to her again. You must have worked really hard to get where you are. What are some sacrifices you had to make? Well, this seems... These are not good conversation starters. These are not good options. You're messing it all up again. You freak her out if the conversation gets that personal that quickly. Do you not realize how important this was for me? I'll never get another opportunity like this again. Everything was riding on this. Give me a better opening line. Hmm, I want to try something. Try stepping back from the stage. I'm in jail again. Okay, yes, now this is working. This the is game working. ends with this eerie premonition of what's going to happen next in Coda's life. The solution to social anxiety, to fears of having to perform and having to chase success, the answer for Coda is to withdraw, to hide himself away, which is what leads to scenarios like the stairs that slowed you down several games ago, where it just becomes harder and harder to access Coda's inner landscape because he keeps retreating. He just keeps backing away from possible hey, connections Annalena, to anyone other than Annalena? himself. This is and called be honest, the beginner's I didn't guide. I didn't consider it very healthy when I first played this. You know, it, it looks to me like he was trying to justify the idea. It's called the beginner's guide by uh, Davy Reedon, who was the writer creator of the Stanley Parable, a game that I really quite fond of. Um, in this part, I read some of these. Um, like these Reddit threads about Davy and and apparently the Stanley Parable was such a massive success that he wasn't prepared for. He, you know, I think he was fairly new to creating games, and this thing just took off. And so it was too much too soon. And my understanding is that he really had a hard time dealing with um, the notoriety and then trying to come up with the perfect follow-up game. So it sounds like he's talking about himself here, which I think would make a lot of sense. Of just disconnecting yourself from the world. 
And that wasn't what I wanted for him or for his games. Because I feel like a lot of his games are inviting me to connect. To connect with this person. To bring him closer. But what can you do? After this, Koda went off and took another five months to make a new game. And then when he says Koda, Mo Mobius trip to play this game, probably you must keep your eyes closed. <laughs> Click to begin the game. <laughs> blind. What's going on? Captain, what can we do? Help, I'm blind. I can't see anything. I can't die like this. I can't die. What's going on? I don't know why. It happened to me too. There was a giant door and then my vision went black. Please, someone talk to me. Please tell me how to solve this. Please don't let this be forever. What's going on? Help, I'm blind. Wait a minute, what is going on You here? should probably open your eyes if you haven't already. It's pretty much impossible to solve otherwise. And there is a solution, by the way. There's a giant door and then my vision went black. Two. Um, I'm gonna do this. Maybe we... Oh my gosh, can I just get out of here? Yeah, let's get out of here. Oh no. <laughs> what, all right, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Oh no. No place to go. Alright, tell me what to do, dude. What am I supposed to do? Help, I'm blind. Uh, how about, I can't say, what's going on? Let's do what's going on. Don't be saying anything. Please, someone talk to me. Oh, God. Maybe I should just do... Please, someone talk to me. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Uh, okay, let's do what's going on. All right, let me explain how you're supposed Please. to do this. Thank you. On either side of the room are elevators, which go up to an upper level. You have to go up, walk over to the person who's standing there, and then select dialogue option number two. All right, I'm gonna get killed here, I might as well wait. Dialogue option number two. Would anybody have gotten that? No one would have gotten that. Oh, I'm on, so you don't have to say any of that. So I have to do dialogue option number two. Go to this dude. Truth. The only way to stop two. I can't keep making these. Stop. It is to speak something that is honest. I can't keep making it. Yes, that's it. That's the truth. I don't feel it anymore. I'm out of ideas. Like I it's said, I was getting me. concerned. First off, he's never been this explicit in his work about exactly what he's thinking. So where's that coming from? But then even weirder, his work has potentially stopped being an outlet for him. Not like he's having trouble iterating on ideas, but he literally just can't think of new ideas anymore. And in person, he was being a lot more distant than usual. Like... You know how sometimes a person will just deflect anything that you say in order to keep themselves disconnected all the time? It was that kind of thing. Here was the point in my relationship with Coda where I really started to wonder if he needed my help in some way. Oh. 
His games are going to get more desperate from here on out. After this game, it's almost six months before he finishes something new. Go there. Got to turn back around. I don't get it. Sometimes I can't tell if there's a problem with the game or. Oh, there we go. What's happened? Did someone ch something change? There was a machine that kept me going and it stopped. Trying to find this engine that used to protect me to start it again. I don't get that. I think I know where it is. It isn't far. What? You have to take me to it. I need to see it to know why it stopped. Um, Sure. I can take if the to last it. game oh. featured Coda talking explicitly about his creative frustrations, this one turns it up to 11. Now, put yourself in my shoes playing this. Here's a friend whose work is exhibiting signs of struggle, frustration, anxiety, depression, even. And yet, still, he keeps making games. He keeps throwing himself into the grinder even when he clearly doesn't have the energy for it anymore. Why? What is it for? I don't know. You gotta keep doing stuff, right? Now what? Am I going back to our sound? There we go. Okay, show it to us. Because from my perspective at the time and, and just what I knew of him, this was a result of how isolated he was. He was in his own little bubble, just sitting at his computer all day, not really showing these games to anyone, uh, not releasing them onto the internet. And so he didn't have anyone outside of himself to connect with. He had no outlet to ground himself on. First, you have to close the door. First, you have to open the door. Two. Now what? Now you gotta close the door. Now you have to close the first door. Now you have to open the first switch. One. All right, what next? Now you have to open the door again. Now just close the first door. Oh, I said it's close. Now just open the first door. I don't think there's a way to open it from here. What are you talking about? Yes, there is. So just press the switch here. Ah, oh, that was so simple. You can't 
talk yourself out of loneliness. It doesn't work that way. True. You can't be the one writing both the questions and the answers. Then there's no movement. Then there's no circulation. If all of your anxieties are being channeled into your work, then if the work ever fails, you have no backup and you're just going to crash. What are you talking about? There's no machine here. There's just words on some walls. What are you talking about? You have to say that your work is fun and easy. You have to say that game development is simple and joyous. And you love it 100% of the time. Okay, making games is simple. Sure, making games is easy. All right, making games is effortless. Sure. I was gonna, things are gonna start falling down. But it wasn't true. Why did the wall just crumble? Just keep saying the creation is easy. Seeing this game at the time that he made it, it looked really unhealthy to me. I was watching him do this to himself, and I hated it. I hated seeing him so trapped. It's like, video games are not worth this amount of suffering. This is someone I really cared about. And I used to get so much joy out of seeing him create. For him to suddenly He's become talking angry about his and own frustrated creativity. like this, it was the worst thing for me. I don't know. This is what I felt at the time. I don't but know I, how else to explain it. I believe this is a question. I, I wanted it to stop more than anything. I had never felt so wrong. I just, I needed more than I had ever needed anything for this to stop. Now he's saying I. He's not talking about code, he's talking about himself. Oh wow, there's a gal there. But it didn't stop. After finishing this one, Coda takes another seven months and comes up with a new game. Oh, guys, I don't know. I mean, I got a few more. I got 15 more minutes. I'm just worried I'm going to get really close to the end. And then come back and play this again some other time and find that there's like uh, five minutes left. Ma'am, I'm glad to see you've arrived safely. We've captured the machine. It's waiting for you now. You can be in the interrogation whenever you like. Yeah, this really is a, a game about the struggle. A struggle for the creative mind. A struggle for doing something for the love of it versus doing something because people expect you to do something. A struggle to come up with especially in this guy's case like a, a, a brilliant follow up to a smash success to not being a one hit wonder I'm sure there's so much and here he is you know expressing all of this anxiety and in the best way that he knows how and the way it played by, by doing it within a game. It's really, really something. Uh, I don't want to be quick. Let's try to be quiet. I like quiet. Let's do that. Very good. Just be warned that someone called the press. So we might have a little bit of attention on this one. Also, one more thing that you should know about the machine. It calls itself Coda. So this is him after I'm totally just prognosticating here that this is just him after we get to see the machine. Wow, you did so great. What are you going to do next? This is him after the success of Stanley Parable. What's going on? Oh, you got to do more. All 
And of course, it's the machine. The machine. You stopped. I didn't stop, you stopped. was keeping us healthy. You stop feeding us. Those people out there, can you imagine what pain you've put them through? I was only because of your creations that any of us can make it through every day. How could we possibly go back to trusting you to do this job? I'm not sure what's going on here. Am I talking? So here's what needs to happen. We need to go to the people who are out there to Apologize them. You have to admit to the people that you allowed them to suffer. Three, I've been so alone. Hmm. Apologize for leaving me. No, nothing. My followers, <laughs> my followers, my friends, my friends. It falls on me to deliver bad news. I have a troubling revelation. Oh boy. The machine will not apologize to us. The machine refuses to admit that it deliberately hurt us. But this is not important. We are stronger than it thinks we are. We will find a way to live without it. We do not need its games. Oh boy. I think we do need its games. This is my... <laughs> Let us pay it retribution. Let us show it that we are not failures. I want to get out of here. And that is all. Follow me, we will destroy the machine. Oh, I did the wrong one. Let's go. Let's go. What? <laughs> oh my god. No way. I have a gun. Coda, I'll make sure your work dies here. Coda, I'll make sure you are known forever. Well, let's make them... Oh, no, maybe we should... Isn't that what you're scared of? Exposed to the view of others every day. Isn't that what you're scared of? Exposed to the others forever seen in naked clarity? So uh, now the work is becoming self-destructive. And I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head and that it's having a very negative effect on him and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work to people to get some actual feedback on his games. It might get him out of isolation. And so, as I'm thinking this, I realize that I could be the one to initiate it. Because it would never occur to Coda to start actively soliciting feedback, so what if I did it for him? If he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings, would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Would it give him confidence in himself? Would it bring meaning back into his work? Would it? I don't know, but I'm just struggling here. Hmm. 
think you only get so much time in these rooms, and it's just gonna beam you somewhere else. Why just shoot stuff? He's trying to have me destroy Coda's. Interesting. I can just get rid of everything. So I started showing Coda's work to people. I took this one and the islands which you just played, the theater, the notes, the house cleaning game, and some of the prison escape games. I brought them to people that I knew and, and trusted. I asked their opinions. And the great part is that they really loved his games. You know, the point of it all was just to give him some external reference point, but they, they genuinely loved his work. There was nothing for him to be afraid of. Well. Can't do anything here. All I can can do you see is... why I felt like this was the right thing to do? Because it's the thing that I always feel like I need to be told that my work is good, that I am good. When when someone it's really connects with do. the thing that I've made, when they see themselves purely in my work, there's nothing that feels better. And I got to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something. I really felt like I'd done something good, like like I was a good person. I felt like there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves, and I could fix it. If I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. When they told me how much they enjoyed his games, it was the best feeling. It was the absolute best feeling. It, it made me feel so happy, hmm. so beautifully, beautifully happy. So anyway, Coda finishes this game, and then really he just kind of takes off for a while. So this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Uh, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email, and it's got a private link to a new game of Coda's. This one is called The Tower, and to my knowledge, it's the last game that Coda ever made. Oh, we're getting near the end. Maybe so we can do let's this. let's take a look. All right. I'm on a little bit of a time. I got maybe another 15 minutes at the most. Got to go... Uh, Stuff. And this is where I have trouble saying anything meaningful about Coda's work. Because more than anything else, the tower just feels distant. It feels like it's trying to distance itself from the world. It's a very cold game. This room actually has a maze in it. Except that all the walls of the maze are invisible. And then every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise. So the experience is really miserable. The game goes beyond not being meant to be played. It actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. But I do want to show you the rest of the level, so when you're ready to continue, press enter and I'll put a bridge over the maze. Thank you. Totally ready. And to be fair, it's not like this is the first game that's needed some modification to be playable. Like the house cleaning game. You know, that one used to actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. Yeah, we did I had that. to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the yeah. game would actually end. But that game had an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? 
What is it? I think he's he has an obsession or a fixation on on unsolvable. The only way past this challenge is to randomly guess the six-digit code. Like the invisible maze, it's frustrating to me because it's the opposite of everything else that Coda has made. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me except a lot of my time. Yeah. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. I'll put the code on the ground for you here, though, so that we can move he on. He does this in Stanley Parable, too. 151617. Oh. Ah! All right, I did it. One five one six one seven. Well, now what? Something about one five one six one seven. Okay. Wait, is this where we came in from? This is new. The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door, meaning that it's literally impossible to solve from this side. So even if you somehow brute forced your way through the first two challenges and you got to this point, there's actually just no way to progress. And it's scary for me, the idea of Coda cutting himself off entirely, just saying, you know, that's it, that's the end of the conversation, not giving me any way to fix the problem. I feel like a failure, I guess, when I can't fix the problem but I can open this door for you so I figured let me do that would. Oh, guys I'm not gonna be able to finish this game you? for not understanding this game I, mean, I don't know why I would be it's not like everything needs to have a solution but I feel it somehow I feel like I failed and I don't understand why I remember, it's June of 2011, I'm playing this for the very first time, and as I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know this person. Hmm. I have no idea who this person is. It wasn't the guy I knew, it wasn't my friend. I had come to so many conclusions from looking at all of his work up to this point, and then suddenly none of them... I had been trying to, though. That was the thing. For years, I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was and, and what he stood for. Hmm. I asked him so many times to please just tell me what his games mean to him. I asked him please to tell me what the three dots mean. And he wouldn't. Hmm. Theme that runs through his games, or at least the two games I played, where this un that this these paths that lead to nowhere, you know, just running in circles, being 
and yet our need to continue no matter what just we're going to see it through to the end this is that's the gamer's mentality is that you just got to see what there is and i'm just walking in circles here and i can't tell if i should still be going up or if it matters does it matter getting close to the end of this game. I want to experience it. And then you're going to go this way. Continue to go up. Whatever. I just felt so strongly that if I could have connected with him, that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. It was that I needed to see myself in someone else. I needed to be someone other than me. But he stopped and left. And it felt somehow like I had failed. Good. Where did I screw up? And there's something about getting to the top, right? When once you get to the top, you've achieved something. And this game is trying to get you to the top of something, but it's just ridiculous because there's nothing. Dear Davy. Thank you for your interest in my games. I am the reason that you stopped making games, aren't I? To ask you to stop. It's because of what I did. Anymore. I poisoned it for you. Hmm. Yeah. When someone cares so much about what you do. You stop doing it for yourself and you start doing it for I don't think I ever told you this, but when I took your work and I was showing it to people, it actually felt <laughs> it felt as though I were responsible for something important and valuable. Hmm. You infected my personal space. It's possible I did begin to plant solutions in my work somewhere, hidden between games. And the people who played them, they treated me like I was important. They really listened and cared about what I had to say. Even though I was showing your work, it was... I felt good about myself. Finally. For a moment, while I had that, I liked myself. When you stop changing my game, stop adding lampposts to them. Well, would you simply and then let you them stop. be what they are? And I didn't have anything left to show people. I I just when had to I'm be with myself. You, I feel as and as soon Ill. as that happened, there was no feeling at all. Something I can't get to. Nothing. Less than it. nothing. I think what this is. Struggling to come up with new ideas is not making me depressed. Low points are just a part of the process. The fact that you think I am frustrated or broken says more about you than me. I realize that this doesn't make sense to you just yet. Which is fine, you're not my problem to solve. But I do hope that one day it clicks and that you make peace with this thing that you are wrestling. Oh, boy. I'm afraid that I did something really stupid because I don't like myself. And what you finally see, and when you finally see what I'm talking about, don't say anything. Oh, wow. This is it, isn't it?
that's why I'm releasing this collection of your work, is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything. And so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world, and if I put my name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you, so that I can tell you that I'm sorry. I know I screwed up. If I apologize to you truly and deeply, will you start making games again? Mm -mm. Please, I need to feel okay with myself again. And I always felt okay as long as I had your work to see myself in. I mean, is, is something wrong with me? Because I know that I did an awful thing, and I'm doing it again right now. Like, I'm, I'm showing people your work, but I can't stop myself from doing it. That's how badly I need to feel something again. Like, I'm an addict. There has to be something wrong with me. Can I apologize? What if I tell you I was wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think it will, but there's nothing else that I can do. Just tell me what you want. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please. Start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put into your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. And I want to know how to, how to, I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I'm fading. And all I want is to know that I'm going to be okay. more praise, more people telling me that I'm good. Always more, more, more. It's like a disease. Solution. 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 Dude is going I guess if stuff. someone had told me ahead of time that he just really enjoyed making prison games, maybe I wouldn't have thought he was so desperate. I wouldn't have told so many people that he was depressed. Maybe he just likes making prisons. Even now, the disease is telling me to stop. Don't show people what a shitty person you are. They'll hate you. I knew that my life depended on finding something to be driven by other than validation. What would that even be? <laughs> it's strange, but the thought of not being driven by external validation is unthinkable. Hmm. Like, I actually cannot conceive of what that would be like. You know that... I never thought about that. What now? What now? What now is all I have to get to the end of this game. I guess I gotta go. I think I need to go. Me too. And I'm sorry, because I know that I said that I would be here and I would walk you through this, but I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of work to do. You and me both. I have a lot that I need to make up for, and so I'm 
just gonna... Okay. Yeah, give us a little sunshine before we go. A little fresh air. Oh, back to that first place. Is this the first place? No. It's very much like that first place. Oh, this is cool. Wow, what an experience. We were able to... It's a real journey. It's a real mental, emotional journey this game takes you on. I... It certainly wasn't what I expected, but it was certainly... Um, along the lines. in that world. Here we go again. It never stops. Now it's just going to keep going on. You're not... Alright, guys. I... I needed to be done 15 minutes ago. There we go. Is there a light post? Can I run? I can jump? Yeah, this has a real emotional impact. Um, there's a lot going on here, and I'm and just this long walk here into the light is, uh, after all the journey we've been on, really, uh, oh, that same thing we walked into earlier. Wow. That's something. That was a game. Wow, that was really something. Hold on just a second. I'm going to turn this down quite a bit. And I'm going to leave this going. Um, I have a lot to process. That was, that had a lot going on. Um, yeah. Um, I'm not going to have time to, oh, I guess I can walk around still, huh? No, I can't walk around, but I can look. I can look at the stars. I can enjoy the horizon of this planet that I'm on. Oh, what's that? Huh. Oh, that was great. That was just great. Um, I don't have time to talk about it. I wish I did, but I got to go. Got to pick up my kid from school. He's got a big track meet, so I got to go do that. Um, this project would not have been possible without the following individuals. But there's so much going on. I think so, I, th I think someone said, and I agree that. Um, not not when a girl goes to X tip ten pieces late. Tip. My friend told me there is an Easter egg um, when watching CWC. Yeah. They said just hit Alt plus F4 while watching. I'm going to do it right in. Oh thank you. Let's see who, who just did that. Let me get to No, nope, let's go here. There we go. Um Jwex, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And uh, I'm sorry, I missed the, I, I didn't hear everything uh, that your text said. Do I have it in front of me? If I do, I'm going to look really quick and then I want to go. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, 
Uh, my friend told me there's an Easter egg when watching CWC. They said just hit Alt plus F4. I'm going to do it right now. Huh. Um, uh, okay, good to know. Anyways, guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with some, uh, some uh, Jackbox, something a little light and fun, and you're all welcome to join. Appreciate it. You were making a joke. I knew that. I'm sorry. I'm a little rattled trying to get out of here. Uh, and that game, that game had a lot going for it. I want to talk about it. Uh, so maybe tomorrow before the game, uh, we start our, our stream with Jackbox. I will share with Daniel what we, uh, what I experienced, and maybe you guys can uh, can join in. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. This game really had a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of depth to it. So. I had fun. I hope you guys did too. Thanks for joining, and I will see you all later. I got to go. Bye. Run, kid, run.